And I would just like to say about this whole Toronto, you know, I, I heard I was trending yesterday uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So there's a saying when the devil ignores you, then you know you're doing something wrong. You know, the, the devil goes, oh, no, leave him alone. Man, he's my favorite. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Don't right, you bother right. him. Yeah. Conversely, and for whatever reason, the devil got a hold of him, that, of that circumstance, that, that night. And fortunately, there were people there, not just me, but others in the gap. Tyler Perry came right immediately, right over there with me. And, and Get ready, because what you thought was predictable is about to take a wild turn. The plot thickens, the suspense rises, and nothing is as it seems anymore. Just when you think you figured it out, bam, everything changes. This isn't your usual story. It's about to get a whole lot more intense. So stay with me, because the next move is going to flip the script completely. Expect the unexpected, because what's coming is going to blow your mind. Hold on, because the real action is just getting started. Average relations improved under his leadership I, you know race relationships have to do with race relationships you're white or whatever you are i'm black or whatever i am we're standing here talking now that's how we get things done you can't legislate love the president of the united states can't legislate us into liking each other we have to step forward and ask questions about each other and engage there's no law that says oh because i'm president you all got to get along now so it's up to us if you don't read the newspaper you're uninformed if you do read it, you're misinformed. Hmm. So what do you do? That's a great question. <laughs> what is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore. So what a responsibility you all have to, be, to tell the truth, not just to be first, but to tell the truth. We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. Anything you practice, you'll get good at. Inclu including BS. You've been waiting for this, and trust me, it's bigger than anything you could have imagined. The truth is about to come out, and it's going to change everything you thought you knew. This isn't just any reveal. It's a game changer the kind that will have you questioning everything. So get ready, because this is the moment where everything shifts. The secrets are out, and the reality, it's going to be shocking. Then blackness. So then, that was the, how can anybody be a millionaire and, and act the way that she does and not share it with people in Chicago? She hasn't done anything for the people in Chicago. She didn't help the people in Chicago. She hasn't done anything then when she was coming up doing her thing. So to me, that's not blackness, man. Blackness is sharing the responsibility. If you have the power to make changes, to do something different, why wasn't more people working on her show that were black? She had one girlfriend that she kept on the show the whole time, but I mean, she could expand at the city. She could have been the mayor, the, the governor of whatever in Chicago, because she was the, the lady, she was powerful. Come on. So you said something about when she does films, she shows her natural self, but when she does TV and so forth, she's always done up and... But you notice when any film she's ever done, she's never done it as Oprah, she's done it as, as Mama Oprah. Mm. Plays like the role Mammy, I, you know, uh, real, di real dialect, Southern, unintelligent woman. But she's bright and she's smart and, she, and in her movie, she plays this, you know, Mama, Mammy, Mammy kind of a role. I mean, to me, that go the other way. Be mammy over here, and then in real life, do something else. But I mean, I can't say like what really happened because you know. And I said this in one of my my tweets. I said I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but I do know that both of these young men have sued Michael Jackson's estate for like hundred, After hundreds day. of millions of dollars. Right, and lost, right? Lost, and they're now They appealing. owe the estate money, for, or they gotta pay the lawyer fees or something like that, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, I think, there's, sure. I think it's something to where, like, by losing, and it was like, now you owe us money for yeah, taking I, us through this process. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact laws, but now they're appealing. Right. And when so Oprah- So this documentary will help what, their appeal. Well, when, when Oprah asked 
one of the one of the guys, you know, well, why did you sue? You know, well, why did you sue? He goes, well, you know, I just needed the the state to respond to me, and the lawsuit was the only way I thought to do it. Well, why why ask for a hundred million dollars? Well, I wasn't even really thinking about the money. I mean, the money was just a non-issue, and I'm like, okay, that's that's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's fucking bullshit. Right yeah, yeah, there. yeah. You know, what I mean, you're a fucking liar. Right, right. That's just that's <laughs> okay. And and what's interesting to me is that none of these young boys who Michael who Michael associated with who actually had money themselves like a Macaulay Culkin or a Corey Feldman or whoever else ever accused Michael of shit right it's always the one always the ones you know because he bought one of those families a fucking house right this is hard man that's just, it's an, again it goes back to even when it was R. Kelly with Michael Jackson like to the black community man these were our family members these these were people that meant so much to they were at every event that they were at the weddings they were at the the birthday parties they were like their music yeah. was like we so to say like imagine if somebody told you that your uncle or your dad or your brother molested someone in your family yeah, we've had this conversation yeah, yeah that, you, that's you what and I'm i just disagree on this I like, just, you know i i'm not fucking with it like you, so the love's gone love's gone okay so this is why this is why i go there i'm in these prison systems every week with brothers that i got love for genuine like some of them dudes got bodies yeah some of these people like some of these they're they're there for a reason you know what i mean how long they're there what the things that have gone on that's all up for debate. But there's some people that have committed some heinous crimes. And I was like, I still can't write this individual law. It's not my job to cancel this. Yeah, individual. but but being in a war and killing your enemy in a war, you know, because if, if if these guys in prison had, you know, military uniforms on, they'd be fucking war heroes. <laughs> right. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. How many people, you know, did Colin Powell overlook murdering? Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Nah. He's a fucking hero with all types of, you know, emblems and, and trophies and shit like been that. Murdered on you his know? watch. These guys are killing, you know, each other. Each other. <laughs> so if you thought the best days were behind us, get ready to be proven wrong. The comeback is real and it's going to blow everyone away. Stay tuned. This is just the beginning. In a fucking war, like I've interviewed these these gangsters yeah. all day long on Vlad TV. This is a fucking war. You a kill war. one of ours, we kill one of yours. It keeps going, keeps going. Yeah. But you have children, man. You know you have this helpless child that doesn't know anything, and you start molesting this child who doesn't right. know anything. Like you're a fucking monster when it you're comes 100 to that. You're 100 right. But what do you find when the person that you love? Now, all I'm saying is when you find out the person you love is a monster. Like you like you sharing this information with me even about Michael Jackson. Like I don't want to believe you. I want to say it's the media. I want to say fuck Oprah. <laughs> like I want to say all of these People things. People were mad at Oprah. I was. I'm mad at Oprah. You're mad at Oprah. Yes. Yeah. Because and it's not and it's because I, I think the the young black boy who loved michael jackson wanted to be like i don't want it to be true i don't want and, and i'm like even and that again it goes back to like damn are, are we just turning a blind eye because we had so much love for his talent and his right. ability well you said you know where's the surviving harvey weinstein documentary yeah. and there are actually like two of those coming no, but in the, in that statement, the reason why I made that, and it like people like you can read into it how however you want to make, I made that to really more to t poke at the media, because the fact that I'm saying we don't keep the same energy. I still ain't seen Har I have not seen Harvey Weinstein's mugshot. Mm -hmm. Every time a rapper, or every time a black man gets arrested, where are the where are the college ladies mugshots, the Aunt Becky and them. Why well, ain't seen they mug shots? Okay, fair enough. But if it's a black man, oh, let's just show him. He's a monster. Like, but every time, like, Harvey Weinstein is a monster. Why well, ain't seen his mug shots? And okay, yeah, they, they, people was at, yeah, they made, they made four or five documentaries. Did you see him? No, I haven't seen well, them, but I Googled they're them. Not, they're not out yet. <laughs> but but even the other one, there was one at Sundance. It was, yeah, are we gonna keep that it's same not, energy when that's? Out. Are we gonna do after interviews? Well, I mean, look at Fire Festival. Fire, th th that guy got brutalized. <laughs> you 
know? Yeah, but again, and we all saw it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, to the fact that, I'm just saying, keep that same energy. The media is not gonna let some prominent white man get hung out to dry. Even this monster, and I'm not, I'm yeah, not justifying I mean, one greater than the other. I'm just saying, going back to me as a as that kid that wants to be optimistic about society, and these were my role models from Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson, even R. Kelly to an extent. These are people that we saw as great, and now their legacy is forever tarnished because they are monsters and did some things that are horrible, but the media loves to throw that in our well, face. I mean... You know, this is, you know, you and I have gotten in trouble in the past for <laughs> yes. throwing some some names out some there. Some names out but, there. But, but even, some I, facts that weren't exactly right at the time. They were still horrible. Right. It was still horrible. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to say who it is. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. any more but any, any more letters. And trust me, you won't believe what happens next. Oh, and again, I told you earlier in the conversation, I like your style. Because I remember when, um, what is it? Uh, Leaving Neverland. Mm -hmm. aired on HBO and uh, right after that Oprah did a special and I believe it was on OWN mm -hmm. and she brought on two of the accusers yep. now like you said Michael had two trials uh, unfortunate for him he uh, paid you know to, to paid some of these kids uh, to keep the accusations quiet early and then mm -hmm. he decided he would fight it yes but more where I'm going with this is you were vocal and you spoke up against Oprah why was it so important for you to take a stand and make your voice heard that you did not agree with the fact that Oprah would give those guys a platform well how dare she she had interviewed Michael at his home. And when people interview, it's just like with Gail King interviewing R. Kelly, you know, at a time when they're vulnerable and they trust Oprah because she was a black woman um, coming to interview them. And at that point, people trusted her. But how dare you bring two guys that was in his, his, uh, his uh, court to both times and then give them a platform to say the same nonsense that they said in the court twice how could you do that that doesn't even make sense to me and he's not here to defend himself and i get so tired of us as artists trusting these black journalists to take care of us but they don't they exploit us and i don't like it i felt like r kelly was exploited whatever he did I don't know anything about I wasn't there. I don't know. But I didn't like the, the interview with Gail King either. And they came after her too, because you're not going to just sit up here and exploit our black men. They didn't talk about Harvey Weinstein. They didn't talk about Matt Lauer. If you're going to, if you're going to confront, talk about them. They're alive. They can defend themselves. Kobe couldn't. Michael couldn't. No, I, I, I do not like it. No, I didn't like it. And I spoke out against it. Has been given 50 million or more four or five times. You can't tell me that Eddie got um, bent over. Now, Will Smith, I don't know, you know, but you can't tell me that. You can't tell me Byron Allen, who's a billionaire, who is a very smart, smart man, him and his mom. These are people who really put in work in this game that really worked hard in this business. Unfortunately, there's no African, black African that can green light a movie in Hollywood. That's something I would like to see that someone to have that kind of power that they could have a green light to green light a movie. Then you have the situation with Taraji Henderson. I saw your thing. Right. Yeah. And I'm going viral over, over this yeah. right now. So let, let's talk about it. This is a good tangent right yeah. now. Let's and, talk and, about and, it. So, so let, let me, let me just, go ahead, let okay. me, let me just, um, get everyone up to speed yes so i've done a few interviews where i've talked about taraji b henson i did it with lunel and also most recently with math hoffa yes the math hoffa clip started to go viral okay and what i said was this first of all let me just kind of state for the for the record okay i love taraji p henson yes. as an actress yes i've seen She's phenomenal phenomenal at what she does yes. i've watched i'm sure every movie she's done yes 
if not every movie, then 90 eight percent of all the yeah. movies she's done in every movie that she's been in she's always killed it yes from baby boy to benjamin button to her tv show with empire to hidden figures everything phenomenal job every single time if it was up to me she would be a leading actress right and she'd be getting paid top dollar right but unfortunately it's not up to me right it comes down to the numbers mm -hmm. you know and how many people that you bring in and unfortunately taraji's more of a um, a co-star as opposed, you know, a, 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 what do you call it? Supporting actress as mm -hmm. opposed to a leading actress. Her okay. leading actress roles have not blown up in terms of the movies where she was the lead, right? like Proud Mary and so right. forth. So what I said was, I understand she's complaining and she was crying that her wages were lower than she wanted. And she even wanted to leave the business at one point. And I said, well, look, number one, as established and loved as she is, why is she not making her own films? Why is she not doing her own production? Everyone in the industry will work with her for nothing. All the biggest stars will do it off the relationship. So true. All the best writers will work with her. All the best directors will say, oh yeah, I'll do a project with you. Absolutely. She could get investors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She could partner up with people where she controls the budget. I totally agree. She could pay herself what she wants to pay herself. Right. It's up to her. And as time goes on, you see the Tyler Perry's of the world who say, okay, we're not going to play this game anymore. We're not going to complain that we should just do it ourselves. And you could do movies for lower budgets and work their way up. Yes, you're not going to do a Marvel movie on your own, but you could do a lot of great films that will have bidding wars over them once you complete them Absolutely. on your own. And what I also said, and this is the part that started to go a little bit viral, is Taraji P. Henson is worth $12 million and lives in a $6 million house. And ultimately, and I'm speaking from my own experience as well, people don't want to hear millionaires complaining about money. Okay. And now everyone's in an uproar over Right, this. I think no, there's nothing you said was wrong there. Thank you. There's nothing you said that was wrong there. Thank you. The thing that um, Taraji, to me, would have to do is get a young team around her. Yeah. You have to get a young team because if, she should be worth more than what she's talking about, right? I agree. Two, but ultimately, you, you get what you negotiate. You get. I was just gonna say that you get you what you negotiate. Take the jobs that you decide to do. You're an yes. independent contractor. You're not working as an employee for any of these right. companies. But and, but here's the play that I said once. You a businessman? We're all in this room of businessmen. When you hear a budget of 167 million. That's what was um, um, Benjamin Button. That was the budget, 167 million. Mm -hmm. And you got 0.01% of the budget. I mean, you're the co-star. Something's not right. So let's let's take Hollywood out now. Let's talk about people. Yeah. Whoever her agency is, and I don't know who represents her, so I don't want nobody trying to sue me. Whoever is her agent, to me, robbed her. Because, Vlad, if you was representing the artist and you knew that the budget was $167 million, they said, Vlad, we could only give your guy $150,000, but your guy is the co-star. Mm -hmm. Your guy is the glue to the movie. Yeah. You ain't doing it. Right. So here's my point. Whoever her agent was, they bullshitted her. They said, listen, take this $150,000. You about to do Brad Pitt, escalate your career. Right. Just take this low amount of money, do it, and you're going to become a star. Well, and I'm sure she made millions of dollars off of doing a movie yes. with Brad Pitt but after the fact. But my point is this, she... But she could have said, that's not enough money. She could have said, that's not enough money. Because even an agent, Vlad... Yes. Who, I'm talking about a real agent, who knows there's a $167 million budget, yeah. will say... I'm not going back to my client. More money. That. Or or how about we just say no money, you give us points off the project. Exactly. Right. So somebody's lying somewhere there. Right. Because for example, I interviewed Jason Weaver. Yes. Right? He sang all the the young Simba lines from The Lion King. Right? Yes. Disney movie. And so what being... his mother did. Right. Th this story here that you already know. They offered him like, I think like a million dollars or something. She turned it down and said, I want a percentage of the film. Yep. And his part was so perfect for that movie 
that Disney, although they've never done that before, they said, okay, fine, yeah. we'll give it to you. And he still makes royalties to this to day his off of that because his mother said, no, we're going to negotiate or else we're not going to sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. You'll have to find another Simba to sing this. Right. Yeah. To sing the parts in The Lion King. Yep. Yeah. Not even do the voice yet. Just do the singing parts. Just sing it. Two million dollars. Yeah, because they were on it like... They were cutting checks like that, huh? Well, you got to remember, they're coming off of... Well, I guess you're the main character. Yeah, and then they're coming off of Beauty and the Beast. Mm. They're coming off of Aladdin. You know what I'm saying? Like Disney, Disney, Disney had bread. Disney just would write a blank check, huh? They'll write it. And, and that was the <laughs> thing that struck my mom. She was like... Because the agent called. Our agent called and was like, Kitty, they offered Jason this. And we were all like, holy shit. Are you sick? I mean, you know, that <laughs> amount of money to average middle class family in Chicago in the early 90s that I mean that's something but my, immediately my mom goes wait a minute after the excitement the initial excitement wore off she's like wait a minute okay if they're willing to do that okay that's just a so that's it that's all he'll ever get for like the remainder of his life they were like that's it he takes the money that's it she was like no nah, let's negotiate royalties and Taraji, I think in that role, the Benjamin Button was the perfect person perfect. for that role. Absolutely. I think if she had negotiated more, she could have gotten more. I totally agree. But at the end of the day, she chose to sign that contract yeah. and she and that's got crazy that money. to me, Vlad. But I, to me, what, well, the, Taraji been in the business too long. Yeah, like what, 30 years To or get played like that. That is an agent, actress discussion that someone bribed her to me, I'm not saying I'm right, ladies and gentlemen, to me, to get played like that. And it's sad. And we have to start going back to where people start stop telling their business. Hmm. This is getting out of hand about such and such made 400 something million. So-and-so got a 10 year contract and stuff because that puts a target on your back. Yeah. It's a target on your back. Yeah. I'd about not being paid what she felt she deserved. And a lot of people, you know, felt what she was going through. Because mm -hmm. did, they, did they feel the same way when Monique was doing it? People compared to the Monique situation. So Monique was basically the first to speak out. She was one of them. So, it's, so, so now that Taraji's saying it, you see that, okay, this is something going on. It's not just crazy Monique no more. Now you see it's a real thing that's going on. Taraji said it, Viola Davis has said it. This is really happening in Hollywood. Why? I have a different point of view when it comes to this type of thing. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Okay. Me, me and Lunell had a, a clip that's actually become the biggest clip on the site right now where we have a discussion about this. The fact that we're getting underpaid, make, you know, you talk about women, we got attitude and all this kind of stuff. You work just as hard, if not harder. And the, you know, Taraji should be making Meryl Streep money. She should be. I, 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 she's a great actress. She's done the, the Black Circuit movies. And then she's done some, you know, Benjamin Button mainstream, you know, she's done some great shit. She's a great fucking actress. Her, Angela Bassett, Cheryl Lee Ralph, they should be making the top, top dollar uh, in, in, in accordance with, with, with some of these uh, male actors and top white female actresses. Now, when it comes to projects, okay? Now, you can relate to this to a certain degree. <laughs> You do interviews for a living. I got a theory too. Right? You you do interviews for a living, just like I do. Mm. Every interview that you do costs money. Right. You have your film crew. You have your staff. You have your co-hosts. Uh, you have your location. And the person who's being interviewed... Now... I occasionally pay, you know, appearance fees for interviews. Do you at this point or no? No. No. Okay. 
But at one point- I cover travel and stuff. But you do cover travel. Okay, so, it, so there's a cost associated with it, right? Some interviews that you do, do very well. Like for example, you have DJ Vlad on your I, show. I, I have that, Vlad. I have I have that chart of yes. Yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm getting my money back from this. Right. So <laughs> we're certain not doing people, it. Right. certain people you bring on, when you count all the expenses involved in it, you lose money. Right. Well, hold on, hold on. I'm not Come done. Come on, no, I'm not I get there. Okay. Same thing with me. Now. Occasionally, and this has happened to me, mm -hmm. interviews will blow up and people will feel like, yo, I should have gotten paid more for this interview or I should have gotten maybe a piece of your revenue or this, that, and the third. I've, I've had these conversations with people. I remember me and Little B, I remember like, you know, we had agreed that some of his videos should be on my channel early on in his career. We put them up there. Some of them did well. And mm -hmm. he was like, yo, uh, you should have cut me some money off these videos and say, but that wasn't the agreement. You know what I'm saying? So me and him had a falling out. At this point, we're cool, but whatever, right? Now, at any point, I've never seen a situation where when a project does bad, that a person says, hey, man, I saw that you lost money on this. Let me give you some money back. No. So saying this, people like to feel after the fact that when something does well, they should get something extra. But at no point do they feel when something does, doesn't do well, that they should kick back to the person who, who lost money. So why, why then would there be such a, a big gap between what people get? I can understand they get one and they get extra. But if I walked in and it seemed like everybody else got extra from the rip and I didn't, that's my problem. Okay. I can understand. Let's just, let's just, let's just call it what it is, man. It's America, man. It's America. America's fucking racist. America is, there, there is, there's racism still alive and breathing and thriving in America. It might be fading in other areas of the world, but it is still here and thriving. And if you're a white man, that means if you're a white actor, I could give you this check because there's not an area of people who's not gonna watch you because you're white. But if you're black, I can't give you this check because there's a bunch of people who's not gonna click because you're black. So people don't watch Denzel movies, huh? White people oh, don't watch Denzel do. movies? Of course they do. But again, bro, it's like, all right, let's let's, let's say it the other way. They're not paying them because they're black. Either way, it's this, it's your black. <laughs> Denzel didn't support Taraji P's claim, but also said that it's the higher ups who call the shots on who fails. They're white. You're getting it. They get this money. You get this money. Never at my point, when I look at appearance fees, do I say, I'm going to pay this dude more because of his race? It ultimately comes no. down to what I think the person, how well their video will perform to my audience. But you don't run Hollywood, Vlad. But I run my own little mini Hollywood. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. I have my own little world. It's about the story for you, it's right? It's about the story for me. Now, for the people you know who saying? are crunching numbers. In fact, and in fact I, I can clearly say I have paid my black guests more than I've paid my white guests. Absolutely. Without Taraji. a shadow of a doubt. Viola, come to Vlad. <laughs> come to Vlad. Yeah, this is where the money's Monique, at. Monique, come to Vlad. Come to Vlad. Uh, Vlad, you should start a film studio. Well, Monique, Monique <laughs> actually came to Vlad and then her husband basically wanted ownership of the video unless, you know, and wouldn't, wouldn't have her sign the release form unless he owned the video. I'm that not mad made. at that because it, You're it, not could mad get, at that? it could get bounced and flipped a million ways. But to, own, but to own it, but uh, to own it, to own it or have me, part ownership for me. Is it okay. part ownership or ownership? No, they like, want to own it outright and license it. Let me use it for, for a short period of time. When I filmed it and there was no discussion of this. If I, if I did an interview right, on your time, if no, after the fact, 
if I did an interview with you, I'll if I went alone. on my expert opinion, right, and you gave me the release form like you gave uh -huh. me last, like, remember I was like, yo, you need to have people sign release right. forms, right? Uh huh. I put you up on that game, right? And now you're using release forms, right? If you gave the release form, be like, um, you know something? Let me have my lawyer look at it. I'll get back to you. And then when I get back to you, say, you know something? I'm not going to sign this unless I own it. In fact, I'm not going to sign this at all. I'm going to give you something different to sign, and I'm going to own it. And you could run it for a little while, but then afterwards, I'm going to own it permanently. Vlad, remember that thing that we talked about earlier, the bite? You bit. They just didn't want the interview up. I guess so. <laughs> and it was a nasty and way and of instead doing of, it. And instead of saying, I wasted your time. Uh, I'm just going to you know, bring up a ridiculous yeah. situation that you're which, not going to go for. Which we know that yeah. you're not going to go for. Which I'm not going to so, go for. And when I said, hey, you know, did you do this when you were on Sway or uh, Breakfast Club? Nah. And they just wouldn't even answer that question. But you, but you know what, Vlad, you, you, again, and it's not fair. It's not fair. They may, they may have done that to you just because you was white. Who and knows? and yo, they shit on us over here, so we gonna shit. But that's not how you fix shit. Yeah, that's not how you fix it. That's how you keep it going. Right. But back to the tribe. But it's whack. It's, it's whack. It's whack. It's whack. It's whack. It's whack. I would I, never I, do that to anybody. If I sat down and I know that you're that, that you're paying for this production, I would sit around and 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 do a bait and switch on you. Right. Have I ever gave you any problems at all when I've been on your show? No. Never, ever, ever. But what if she'd offer you money for it? Then that's a negotiation then. Right. But there was no money offered. No. She just said she wanted to own it. Yeah. Her husband. I never spoke to her. Her husband. Oh, you never spoke? Okay. Yeah, her husband was her, who was in the actual video. Hey, yo, so. man, you, you never know. He might have just got off a phone call with Warner Brothers. And you and know. you got the bad end of that that deal. You know, know what I'm saying? It's still, I don't know. It's still a sour taste in my mouth over that shit. Yeah, but the, you know at the same time, it's like for someone who's going through that, Vlad, it's unsettling that you you want to believe that this shit is based on how skilled I am. This it's, is this they, is hold, this hold, is, hold on, hold on, okay, hold on. Let me finish. My bad. You want to believe it's based on how skilled I am. I've harnessed my skills. I've I've done and I've put hours, my whole life into this. And when you turn that camera on, ain't many people like to hang with me. Yeah. I intimidate some of the people that you're paying more money than me, which makes no sense. Makes all the sense in the world. It doesn't, bro. And this is why. It does. And this is why. When it comes to entertainment. It is not based on skill level. It's based on Power. how many people you could get in those seats or how many eyeballs you could get. People are either paying with their money or their eyes. It's one of the two. Now, hold on, hold on. L let me finish. Is Taraji P. Henson a better actor than Brad Pitt? There's a very good argument for that. Does Brad Pitt have a bigger fan base than Taraji? I understand he what does. you're saying. So therefore, when it's time to come up with budgets for people, yeah. they say we're going to How offer people... Brad this much. Because he can get offer people Taraji because because he is a leading man. Unfortunately, Taraji is not a leading actor. Because they won't let her be, or I might say, Oprah won't let her be. I understand when she, what you're saying. She is a great supporting actress. Viola Davis is a leading actor. Why does she have that problem? Does she have the same power, bruh? This audience, you can't, as, you can't count numbers, bro. You, you, you have on, to count numbers. On. It's all bruh, about numbers, bro. The whole it's world was tuning numbers. in to how, how to get how to get away with murder, bro. And, and it was a show all about her. And how much was she being paid for that? Let's take a look. Uh, how much crazy, though. did Viola? Like, I can understand your argument. Davis get for well, Brad Pitt to rock, but Viola, bro, now that don't, that don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. But but I will say she this. got a quarter million dollars per episode <sighs> for six seasons. Okay, that is a nice bag. It's a nice bag. But um, it's a nice bag. What was uh, what was what's what's homegirl's name that that that, that uh, was on Seinfeld? What was she getting? 
Okay, for, first of all, first of all, before we go, before we look this before up. Before we expose this racism. Hold on. <laughs> Seinfeld was a much bigger show than How, than to, get how to Get Away With It's not even close. I just want to see what in the fact, contrast In fact, Seinfeld is still in syndication. I want to see, wait, wait, see, see, look, 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 Vlad, you're trying to protect him. But, but also. Trying to protect you, you, your house buddies. I don't know any of these people. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Viola. I don't know Seinfeld. I don't know uh, Dreyfus. No, 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 no. But, but it, to those people, I say this. And I know it's tough. But technology, we're getting to a place where you can get ahead of the curve. 600,000 per episode. Huh? 600,000 per episode. Six hundred thousand. Jerry Seinfeld is getting a million per episode. A million per. Yeah. Seinfeld is a bigger show than How to Get Away with Murder. You can't. You can't even. This not even. All right. So give, give me a show that's on the same level with yeah, a white have to, a white female actress. I, I'd, I'd have to start running numbers. I, I can't do this in a spur of the moment. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to dodge this. I'm just saying that trying to get a show equivalent to another show real time is is very difficult right anybody, now. Anybody? Else, anybody got a suggestion? Anybody got a suggestion? It's too hard of a suggestion. All I'm saying... <laughs> but, but here, here, here's, no. the, here's the thing, right? Let's just be real, on a, on a, Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I, I want to say this. On a macro level, here, here's the bigger problem. No one wants to hear a millionaire com complain that they didn't get more millions. You're already a millionaire. Taraji lives in a $6 million house. She's worth $12 so million. Dollars. What? No one she wants to hear. She has sacrificed... Nobody wants to hear Vlad complain about money. For the sake of a craft, she has sacrificed. Sacrifice. Hold on, she sacrificed. Sacrifice. Listen to me. Or is that Brad, what she really let, wanted let me to talk, do? Let me talk. Okay. For the sake of her craft, she has sacrificed her pri privacy. She cannot walk around and regular. Okay, she lives in a six million dollar house. Why? Why? Can't she live in the hood? Can she live in the burbs? Someone Will she be left alone? She won't, right? Someone worth twelve so she million has will never to live, live in someplace. Where they, they oh, is she's protect. forced to live in a six million dollar house. Boo hoo! Oh no, I have to live in my six million dollar uh, house. But, but, but understand, what like, was me? Life is so hard. Yo, you make you make it sound like it. <laughs> I'm not yo. But, but, no one wants to hear a millionaire complain. No one wants to hear. That is a fact, right? That is a fact. Does no, anyone want to hear me? To hear it. Does anyone want to hear Vlad complain about money? Nobody, not a damn person, and I know it, which is why I don't complain about money. But they're not complaining about the money. I had money. a rough year. They're not complaining about the was money, Vlad. Year. They're I'm not, not complaining. complaining about the money. No, it's she not, was complaining. The, it's the, not the money. She was specifically complaining about the money. She was crying about the money. She even said really at one point. No, it's not about the money. Something deeper going on there. Do you think it's really about the money? Yes. It's all about the money. That's oh, the, that's oh, the oh, whole is it about? I work this hard, and they can still do this. Okay, that's he, what it's about. Here was my. Point. That's what it's really about. When me and Lunell had a what it's when really me and about. Lunell had a conversation about this. This this was my point. Okay. When I first got into the film business, my first project, my first documentary, was called Ghost Ride the Whip. I directed and produced it. I spent four months working on it nonstop. I was in the editing bay every night, working, 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 not getting sleep, trying to come up with the best project I could. I possibly could. I put my heart and soul into this. I come from the bay. This is a very personal project for me. You know, I pulled strings. I got Sway to narrate it. He got paid. You know what I'm saying? Everything else like that. It came out. It was reasonably successful. I got paid 25000 for my role in it, and I never got a royalty check after that. The film company I went through said they never recouped. I got 2500 For what? And I was a lead role. In? Rap War One. Okay. You, through someone else's company, right? Okay. So, so. You got 25000 For directing and producing a film that was on I Netflix, got 20, I got that was on BT. Yeah, okay, it was on, right, mine right. was on Stars. Okay, there you go, right? It was on Stars. It was on Stars. Vlad. Right, I People changing the my, channels. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's Netflix. Mass. Vlad, oh, here goes Vlad oh, on shit. Netflix, right? You know what I told myself? And I never recouped. I never saw it to this day. This was 15 years ago, because I was doing this right when Vlad TV was launching. And I looked at this and I said, okay, I'm not doing this again. From here on in, 
I'm no longer going through these movie companies. I'm going to own my own content. I'm going to shoot. People ask, oh, why are you always behind the camera? Because when I started, I couldn't afford a cameraman. I was holding the camera. What? I was holding the camera. I was, I was editing the video. I was writing up the titles. I was putting it out. I was doing the marketing. I was doing everything. You know why? Because I couldn't afford anything else. You remember, I mean, you know, we met probably not too long after that. I'm not making this up. What I said at that point Here is we that, are. listen, I can complain. I can go on MySpace and say how Image Entertainment did me dirty and they owe me money and I wasn't paid enough. Or I could say, fuck it. I'm going to build up my own thing and go, you know, from a small scale and work up and own my own projects. No, fuck that. And I will, I will do it myself and I won't have to worry no, about first, getting underpaid. But first... We have to sync the people who's who's practicing it. Sync? So I hope that every actor that's been underpaid or 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 been through some sort of uh, of Im imbalance or injustice, I hope every single one of them speak out, speaks out against that that company or or that that production house or whatever it is. I hope they speak out in the midst of creating their own independent films in the midst of creating the routes where those companies don't hold power. I know this sounds very romantic. I know you, to, you, to, you to don't get it, what I'm saying. To put it that way. No, I understand but what you you're saying. What I'm saying. I understand what you're saying, but what, what I'm saying is... To be able to do that, Vlad, especially with Hollywood, they first have to sink the people who are going to spend their money in trying to destroy you after you do it. You dig what I'm saying? No one's, no one's, I mean, I know it sounds cool that. that people are destroying you and blacklisting that she wants to make, and she but, but she has to transition into other roles. She like, has to keep going down. The journey ain't over. Journey ain't over. Yeah. It's like, go keep the journey. No. Michael, Michael Jai White realized that how, Michael Jai White told me in our interview, that he met with a big producer and the producer told him that you'd be as big as Tom Cruise if you were black. He said, okay, let me go make my own movies then. That's always the Outlaw Johnny Black, written, produced, put out by Michael Jai White. I can't he wait. He pulled up in a brand new, uh, you know, Range Rover. Like, and I asked him, I said, out of all the movies that you've done, and you gotta think that he's done Batman, you know, Spawn, like, bunch of movies. I said, have you ever gotten paid as much for a movie than putting out your own stuff. He's like, not even close. The stuff I put out myself makes way more money. And he keeps making money. Blood and Bow made a ton of money off that. His own movie. Mm. Doesn't win Academy Awards, but it's got a cult following and it's got a real audience. And he starred in it. Yes. It's like that was my point. Is like, yo, like I'm not hating. I'm not saying she should accept getting paid less than her white counterparts. No, no. no. It was up to me. She no. should get paid top dollar. But at the end of the but day. That's what part of that whole society of what? Entitlement. So you think she's entitled? Yeah. If you say, if you look at this person's check and say, I should be, it has nothing to do with you. Yeah, man, listen, me and D.L. Hughley, we, we were talking the other day, and, you know, we were talking about the whole Monique situation. And he pointed out that there is not a single person in entertainment, <laughs> including him, including me, and probably including you, that feel that they are paid what they deserve to be paid and given the accolades that they feel they deserve they you should don't, get you don't. everyone feels underappreciated in their own way but not everyone goes on a tie, public tirade and and starts suing everybody and crying about it you pay what you you get paid what you negotiate exactly that's it that's it if you don't want to do it then you don't do it out. next film next project you know how many film movies i turn down how many about five so what do you have to say about this comment down your thoughts right now and make sure to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel to stay updated in future. Until then, keep exploring.